Hi, I'm David, um, and I really like CRDP. Mike? Yes, I'm usually loud enough. OK, um, but of course, recording. So uh, yeah, so and I really like CRTP. And I've seen it actually talk in a, in a bunch of talks this week. And I wanted to share some of my thoughts on it. And feel free to disagree with it. Here's an alternative title is how I use CRTP. And you can say maybe I'm being too fancy and tell me that after the talk and we can have a discussion. So here's classic CRTP. This is basically the thing that we've taken. Uh, I took directly off of the Wikipedia page for CRTP. Most of uh, you in this room probably know this. So I'm going to go over it very quickly. but. The basic idea is you, you, you have this kind of reverse casting thing where you end up with a static cast. Whoa, OK, there we go. Right here uh, in, in the base class. And then you're presenting a, a persistent interface or a consistent interface to the uh, to, uh, external functionality. Um, but um, my uh, hot take is that modern CRTP is much more about code reuse than interface consistency. We have much better mechanisms for interface consistency now. Uh, like concepts. Um, so I code reviewed something that looked roughly like this uh, pretty recently. I got um, a, a check-in that someone had taken and said they needed new functionality in Widget 2, and they had about 100 lines of code uh, that was all the same, and then one line that was different, and another 100 lines of code. And I said, well, that, and they had about five other widget implementations with varying numbers of lines of code uh, changed from 1 to about 20, but the vast majority of everything was the same. And they came back to me and said, but this is interloop code, so this is the best way to write things. Well, putting that aside for a minute, um, this, is a, this is a prime candidate for the kind of thing that you can update very quickly with CRTP, right? This is, the, this is, this is something that the, the least, I would argue that the least intrusive way to update this is CRTP. And I have to go really fast because I am taking a lot longer than I thought I would. Um, OK. Uh, so. Let's talk about some of the pitfalls of CRTP. Uh, can anyone tell me, will this compile really quickly? N no. I heard you no, yes. This is no. All right, what about this? If I use um, a yes, no, yes, no, no. All right, what about this? If I use it as return value? No. What if I do this? <laughs> The answer is surprisingly yes, and I actually didn't know that one until I plugged it into Godbolt. Um, what about this? Yes. So that's a workaround for if you have to do the other. Uh, what about this? This one should be pretty obvious, kind of the whole point. Um, all right. Uh, what about this one? Yes. <laughs> I was surprised by that one. OK, now what about this? There you go. So this is, how, this, is, this is the point. This is how you reason about this, right? The compiler has to construct this class, right? It has to know how big the class is before it can derive from it, right? And so because this is a, oh, I'm sorry. This is auto. You can't do that anyway. But <laughs> Fair. <laughs> But the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that you need to be able to construct the class before you use it. So, all right. So quick thoughts on uh, little mini patterns to do better CRTP. One um, is uh, hide the static cast. Uh, makes code a little bit more readable. Uh, another thing is don't use the base class for an interface. Use a concept and hide your base class in some implementation um, namespace. All right. Uh, use defaults. People seem to be afraid of this for whatever reason. This is one thing we can talk about and disagree about. That's a fun thing for us to discuss, but I actually find this to be quite useful and leads to very extensible code. Uh, make implementation details private whenever you can. You have to add friendship and things like that. Um, along with this comes the fact that you probably shouldn't be putting data members, protected data members in the base class for the same reasons you shouldn't be using protected data members in any other place. Um, yeah, look at the uh, CPP core guidelines if you're interested in that. And fi finally, uh, if you want to do more recurring, if you want to recur through a middle layer, you have to do something like this, where you uh, use a sentinel, um, and then you stick uh, an is same in there and um, pass things through. And I wish I had more time to explain this, but I don't. So um, yay.
Hey. 